you've given us this day and for the wonderful day that I've had so far. And thank you for all the members of our Heritage Club that were able to travel up and go to the Heritage Center with us. We had, we thank you for everything that you have done for us. Be with us throughout the rest of this day. Give us wisdom, guidance. Let us make good decisions as you would have us. Let us be kind to one another. And always remember the golden rule. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Meredith Fraley? Here. Gil England? Bill John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Harley Baker? Here. Julia Coates? Here. Bradley Cobb? Joe Crittenden? Here. Jody Fishinghop? Here. Janelle Fulbright? Here. Don Garvin? Chuck Hoskin Jr. Here. Tyna Glory Jordan. Present. Curtis Snell. Here. Chris Bo. Here. David Thornton. Kara Cowan Watts. Oh, honey. We do have a quorum. We have a quorum. Excuse me, Shelby. Uh, yes, Mr. Angus. What'd you say? Making sure she was oh. counted in attendance. Oh, you're not here. <laughs> First, next order of business is uh, a resolution adopting principles. Uh, yes, sure. Can I make a motion to move number one to number three? And let's possibly discuss the maps first. We may not even need one. One. So we want to go. Number two would be number one, and number three would be number two. Okay. Do we have a second. Okay. Move the second in discussion on uh, changing the agenda. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say aye. Okay, so item two is number one now. Discussion of possible action of a redistricting map. And we've been handed out a staple a collection of maps, uh, one through seven. And Mr. Henry, did are you did you work on these or? Yes, uh, me and uh, Mr. Justice uh, David Evans, uh, other council members. I know there's been a, a whole series of maps requested. Uh, what you have before you is is, is seven of them. Okay, I have requested that uh, uh, Doug get on a PowerPoint here, so when we discuss each map. We can have it on the screen, and that way there would be no uh, confusion as to which page we're on, on so to speak. The, uh, uh, the ideas of the maps are the same as, as always, uh, trying to be uh, simple, increase voter participation, uh, keep on major geographical or uh, uh, either... Uh, County boundaries, or bodies of waters, or rivers, or major highways. Uh, that's always been a consideration. Obviously, we are not going to get to a point where we're going to be completely equal, but we need to be have a, uh, a reasonable basis for our division. Uh, so, in that regard, what I would recommend to the subcommittee is to literally go through each map, uh, discuss it, and um, uh, uh, see see if we're even if we're close to a. Cons uh, to a consensus, uh, you know, we're, we're getting to the point where we, we've, we've gone through a lot of variations, and it's just going to be something that the council needs to, to pick one and go with it. I mean, we're 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 at that time. Uh, I, I would uh, would hope that uh, we would have this list of seven here that we would forward one or two, no more than three, to the rules committee. Uh, coming up, and that way we can. Um, if, if, that would be my recommendation. See if we can, we, we, if we can do to get the process uh, going. But you've, a lot of hard work has uh, went into this. You've been very diligent and very uh, thorough in your uh, uh, deliberations on this, and we have seven maps. Todd, I have a question before we continue. The um, citizenship population. For each map, or derived from what sources? I, I am going to 
give that question to uh, David Justice, but I believe it's uh, from uh, tribal registration and uh, the GL data. <coughs> yes, all of these numbers have been uh, calculated from the registration database as of 11-15-07. They all have the same date. For registration? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ms. Fishing Hawk and then Mr. Hoskin. Uh, do you know if Lila Umberkissi is going to be over here to answer questions today for registration herself so we can get her numbers for sure? No, I did leave a message for her, uh, but according to um, Lita, she is not available today. Is that all, Jody? Yeah, because I had a problem understanding some of these numbers and them being off with registration and what showed up on my side. Okay. Mr. Hoskin? Madam Speaker, is the, the methodology to come up with the numbers, that's unchanged from the last meeting that we had, is that right? In terms of where these numbers come from. And the last time we had a set of numbers for various maps, and they were all derived using the same methodology. I just wonder, has the methodology changed at all since our last meeting? Uh, yes, it, it has slightly. Um, in, the, in the previous uh, meeting, we were looking at zip code numbers, um, for the whole zip code, that, for the zip codes that, get this out correctly, um, for a zip code that was completely within our 14 county jurisdictional boundary, we took that entire zip code boundary and assigned the entire number. If that was a thousand people, then that zip code got credit for a thousand people. The boundary zip codes, uh, we used 911 uh, to calculate the in and out percentage. To Split a zip code on a road or, uh, for example, the, the map that is up there, you notice the, uh, in the Tahlequah area there where the uh, uh, Bill John Baker's uh, star is, where it kind of splits the, uh, into three different areas there. It's actually only two, I guess, but it splits 51 north and south, uh, Highway 82 east and west there. Um, to get that uh, percentage of what was east or west of Highway 82 and north or south of Highway 51, we went back to the proportionment method, which used the land base method, saying that 20% of the land base was north of Highway 51, so it got credit for 20% of the numbers. Just if I want to follow up, sure. the meeting that we had, I forget the the day of the meeting, the meeting we had at the council house when this place was damaged. Um, you, you told us about the best methodology. Yes. So have you strayed in any market way from that methodology? I mean, I mean, are we... Well... Because that was the best at that time. Yeah, and I, I still believe it's the best, but to take these little pieces of a zip code and put them and assign them to one district, I, for the majority of them, I don't have a choice. That's the method that I have to use to try and square everything off on a county boundary. Right. Well, I understand. I, just do I understand that we yeah. have moved somewhere. Thank you, Mr. Sure. Any other questions? Yes, Ms. Fulbright, and then Mr. Baker. Okay, I have a question. Because when you said you take the 20% of me, what you just said wouldn't be very accurate at all. And I've got a friend that is secretary of the election board in Sequoia County, and I asked her how they did. And she said they require everybody when they register to vote to give a physical address, not just a Route 1, Box 42. Right. You've got to tell how many miles this way and how many miles that way. This is a guessing. That's what you're saying. Exactly. It's not given us an exact anything. Maybe they live there and maybe they don't. That's the problem with the proportionment method. I actually contacted the state uh, to try and, I hoped to be able to merge our numbers with the state's methodology in determining, you know, how many people were in the district and so forth or in, in a given precinct. But the problem with it was they do not consider rural routes or PO boxes a valid address. When I queried our registration database to figure out how many rural routes and PO boxes we had, it was almost a third of our citizens are listed with a rural route or PO box, so the state would have automatically thrown those out. So that's why we didn't pursue that any further. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
But as I'm saying, when you register to vote in Sequoia County, they won't accept right. a rural route or a, anything like that. You've got to tell them. So to me, we need to know where these people live, not just... Well, the, the state's been doing it for 30 years, though. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Baker, and Dr. Cobb, and Mr. Jordan. Yeah. Uh, Martha, come up here just a minute. Yeah, please. Yes, sir. The looking at this map right here, if we were to choose that with all your valuable experience at the Election Commission, and we carved Cherokee County into five different counties, actually. I mean, there's a uh, east and a west Cherokee County. Part of the north goes to uh, Delaware County. Part of the north goes to Mays County. Part of the southeast goes to Adair County. Is that not going to require that A, we completely re-register everybody, and B, if we don't, how are you ever going to assign people to their voting districts? Okay, the, the first thing is we're going to have to re-register everyone that's in a district that is not county bound, I think. The, all those are. <coughs> and then Route 2, do they live on the north or south or what side of the river? So we're not going to know. So are we going to take that person's word and we're going to, may I touch this, we're going to hand this person when they come in to register this and say, where do you live? You'll be surprised the people that don't know where they live when we hand them this. And they don't know whose district they're in. <laughs> and or there'd be some that would want to just say, I'm, I yes. live over here, but I really live here now because yes. I want to vote. And, and we're not going to know. The election is not going to know. We're almost going to have to take them at their word that this is where I am because I, I'm not sure how we're going to do that. How it can be done, even. Because, see, in this particular example, 74464 4, 7, is going to be part of one, two, three, four, possibly five districts. Yes, sir. I, that's what it looks to me, four for sure. And possibly five. And uh, it's just. And then, well, Rogers County is almost as bad. Yes. The, uh, it's one, two, three. It's going to be in, in five different districts. Yes, sir. And. Uh, but would you agree that if we could maintain the old county lines, that would effectively make your job a whole lot easier? It would, it would make the election office, our job, easier there, yes, if we maintain the county boundaries. It would probably make it easier. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Baker. Uh, Dr. Cobb. Um, a question for David. I'm a little confused. Uh, in Washington County, uh, we don't do rural routes anymore. I mean, you live at 3990 West 240 Road, and they did that for fire departments and sheriff's departments, and they know exactly where you live in Washington County. So I'm confused. I'm, I'm a little confused. Are we the only county that has done this, or only about half of our counties have? Okay. So. In Washington County, when they give you an address, you know exactly where they live. Yes. And but some of our counties, you don't have a clue. Right. Is that what I'm gathering? All right. But also, that's for Washington County databases. Right. For our database registration database, it's not necessarily a, a uh, certainty that we're going to get a good physical address. A lot of the addresses that we have may be old still. Be because of the roll, because right. of the roll, but because the mail actually goes to these new addresses, I do know that. Right. From my patient database, I mean, it's it's in there. So we, we're just we're just not updated on on. You have to go with what they've given you. Right. And if they haven't, and if Washington County has ten thousand rural routes, then you know those are ten thousand. Right. And you know, obviously now, if it says so and so lives in Washington County and it's a rural route, you know it's an old address because we don't use those anymore. Right. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Would you mind an interjection here from Mr. Baker? Yeah, and we did. This is a follow up to what you just said. That we don't have rural routes in Cherokee County either. But the the best addresses that we have for Cherokee County voters is still 
what the election board gave us. Of which, Tyne and I just pulled out about 1,500 addresses that were rural routes, highway contracts, and the information they've got in their database. Well, the, so so the, we pulled those out and didn't mail them. Then we mailed uh, the other 4,000, and we've already got back seven or 800 of those. So, you know, the addresses are, are really bad. And, and we've got people that are registered to vote, Cherokee County, that are still, they, I'm sure they've got an address that says uh, 783 Road or, you know, 876, 873 Road, but we don't have them. And the election board doesn't have them. Well, and, and that, that's going to be, if, if I may, do I have to start on the floor? Thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and that's my question. How does, how does the state election board... I mean, do they or do they rely on the same? Do they just rely on people to update their information? I mean, how does that? I, I don't know. I'm asking. Who, who well, knows that question? I mean, they answer. They, they primarily take it off of uh, your voter registration card. So if your voter registration card is not updated, right? Do do they ever update them? Uh, when you move, you're supposed to. So they're in the same. My, my my question is is ultimately what I want to know yes. is is the state election board in the same predicament we are? Yeah, the state election board is. That's what uh, I if, want to if they have a bad address, if they have a rural no, route, no. they toss it. They, they just, just get rid of it. Okay, yeah. that's what I want to know. They try to they try to make contact with the individual by uh, mail outs or something along that lines and get a good physical address or even driving directions if they have to. But they've been updating their database to accommodate those for. 30 years now, so. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Callan Wise, did you have an interjection there? Yes. Uh, thank you. Because we just went through a challenge in a Rogers County election in the past year. It's up to those voters to provide a valid address. The candidate then has opportunity if there's a challenged election. There's typically in the election law, you have to show that you'd have to bring them in, subpoena them, they would have to testify, or you'd have to provide proof that they did not live in the district any longer and where that alternative address was. Um, and it provides a mechanism then for the candidate to challenge that election based on bad voters. Because I'm assuming that's really what we're after is if people intentionally voting in a district that they did not reside in. I guess there's also the apportionment deal, but you know the apportionment deal is based off citizenship registration and not voter registration. So those are kind of two different data. Those are two different data sets. Mm -hmm. um, but then, if you find that a voter did not provide correct information and actually lived in a different district, then that would open up an opportunity for a challenge in front of the election commission and in the courts. So yes, they rely on it, but there's a mechanism then for people to find out and, and use that. If if I may indulge your patience, um, well done. Uh, I would concur with your findings on your voter registration database for Cherokee County, uh, what I found in, in, uh, in our district. So my question is, we're trying to redistrict, and if he's finding that many in his district, and I can concur in my district, how are we going to redistrict with poor numbers? And I guess, and I want to, what I want to know, and I know you've already answered this, but I want to answer it again, if you don't mind. We got bad numbers. Yes, we do. What's the best way to redistribute? Go with what numbers we have, which I believe is the zip code totals. And just go with the, what, just do the best we can with what we got. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm not gonna, this is the last interjection because there's other people wanting to talk, but Bill John has his. Uh, statement yeah. in regard to what you just said. And another problem that we that we have is you could take in corrected addresses to the election board or they could know that somebody has moved and has a new address, but they will not change the address, correct it or repair it, no matter if they know it's a fact, unless that person comes in and, and asks that it be done. So even though rural routes are gone and we know that Joe Bob's got uh, eight, or instead of H373, he is 7836, and it could be in the phone book, it could be, you know, any place of record, and we don't, we do not, we are not on a mission like the state is, correcting addresses. 
and we don't even send out a mailer after the election asking for address uh, correction requested so that we could stay on top of it. And uh, so, you know, we spend thousands of dollars every time correcting addresses that we know are wrong, and we can't even share that with the election board to get them fixed. Because unless that person asks it to be fixed, we have, I guess we have a law or a policy. Which is it, uh, Martha? Is law or policy? I think it's a policy. Okay. Yeah. We, the election service office does not change an address unless that individual makes that change in writing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Miss Jordan? Um, David, let me. I'm just trying to make sure. Maybe we can we can part these down real quick. One, you kind of messed up on Wagner because you meant for it to all go one or the other place, either Cherokee County or Mays County. Is that right? <coughs> so that's why you withdrew. Uh, With that's okay. really a bad map. With okay. Uh, You're talking about with yeah, okay down okay here. Yeah, okay has to. Wagner goes all of one way, either Mays County or Cherokee County, right? Right. So one is really a bad man. I, I just made the changes okay. that were given to me. <laughs> okay, but that really, what you meant, on all the other maps, Wagner either goes to Cherokee County or it goes to Mays County, right? All of it. Because they don't have 911. Right. So the only change from one to two was to put okay with all the rest of Wagner. Yeah, and the correction of the uh, road labels, 62 uh, and 82. Okay. Those are the only changes made between one and two. Number two is on the screen now. Okay, so really one needs to be thrown away because that, would you all agree that's, we can't split Wagner because we don't have 911 now. So you want to make that motion? I make that motion, we just throw out one and that kind of, <coughs> gets us down maybe to some that we're really going to consider. Do we have a second? I don't understand the motion. She wants to, she feels like map one is not a valid okay. map. Okay, that's yeah. what she meant by It one. was all, Wag, or Wagner County was either all to go to Cherokee County or all to go to Mays County is my understanding. Mm -hmm. So, and that was, somebody noticed that when this map came out and he would he redrew it, and it's number two. Thank you. And I just thought, well, maybe we get rid of one, and that gives you six. Six. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of discarding map number one, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay, number one is discarded. Okay, and I, uh, item two. <laughs> number two is on the screen here. Uh, Mr. Foston? Thank you, Mr. Um, the numbers we're working off of are citizenship numbers, not voter registration numbers, right. is that correct? Yes. Is it possible that we have a citizen who has reported a good address to registration, but, that, but has not updated the to the election? Is that, and, and Martha may speak to that too. She's shaking her head. Yes. Yes. Sir. Yes. yes. Does so that may further complicate what's a good address and the lack of communication between the two, which will be the policy or law must be policy, stops that kind of uh, updating. And as to the point that, uh, well, let me back up. I think I heard Martha say that if there's a district that's not contiguous with the county, in other words, if there's a, some portion of the county, that there would be, have to be some re-registration involved. And, and that is true whether it's 911 addresses or not, or only where they're not 911 addresses. Either. Yeah, either one. Yes, I think sir. either or. So suppose they're not 911 addresses and they're rural routes. The, the comment was made, we have to take their word for it. You know, it's a rural route, it's not a physical address really. Uh, we have to take their word for it that they live two miles west of the river and, and what have you. But that's the same for the state of Oklahoma, on, on, on as I understand it, isn't that true? They have, you have to... As Councillor Fulbright said, you have to tell them where you live, so many miles from this point. We're, we're taking their word for it. So I don't know that any other government has come up with a better way than that as far as these non-911 addresses. We just have to take their word for it. 
are you aware or is Martha aware of any other system that has, has a better way of doing it besides taking their word for it? And Martha, do you know? Not I'm aware of. And, and that's true, isn't it, Martha? The state of Oklahoma has to take their word for it. Uh, if somebody lives in a, a rural address and they say, well, I live at Route 1, Box 5, but here's physically where I live, and they write it down in the voter registration form, and the state probably doesn't look behind that until somebody challenges it. And they probably sign that under penalty of perjury. I don't know. But but that's how it's done, I think. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Crittenden. Uh, I'm going to withdraw my request for okay. time. we got some maps going here that might speed things along. So Ms. Fishinghoff? I move that we just fall upon this map and throw it out because Madam Speaker's district is in four different counties and I think that's unreasonable. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second to discard map number two. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Austin? Well, I thought as Madam Speaker, should we go through some kind of overview of each of these maps before we talk? I mean, I, I'm in agreement that that seems unreasonable in space, but we haven't had the benefit of a discussion of each map. I mean, certainly map number one was effective, and, uh, but that's my only concern is we, we haven't gone through all the maps to kind of compare. Okay. Uh, all in favor of discarding map number two, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Now, he has a good suggestion. Do you want to go starting with uh, map number three, give a brief overview, Mr. Justice or Todd, of each map, and then go back and uh, start over again with uh, map number three? Okay, map number three. Three? Okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, map number three is a five district map with three counselors per district. This was uh, originally uh, forwarded through the uh, uh, chief's office, um, and that's that's what that we that's been in front of you for a while. Uh, Miss Count Watts, I make a motion we withdraw maps numbers three and four. Second. Move and second to withdraw map number three. <laughs> Any discussion? And four. Well, we had four. Seen four. Yet. four. Okay, you want to go through number four before we play? Let's do number three first. Okay. All in favor of discarding map number three, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. Uh, one aye. Okay. Map, uh, map number four is still based on the premise of a five district. Um, uh, five districts for three counselors per district. The difference between three and four is that uh, uh, Craig and Nowata is are, is in with Mays County. All right. Any discussion, Mr. Baker? Uh, Madam Chairman, yes. the, I looked at this one. It does make some sense in that uh, it breaks us into to five districts on a every two years either the people in those districts would either vote for two council person and then two years later they'd vote for one. So it would keep the people involved where they would actually be voting every two years just like the at large people would be voting every two years. They'll vote on a one two year cycle for one one seat the next two year cycle they'll vote for the other seat so it'll keep them engaged and in voting uh, more often whereas if you go to uh, uh, 15 seats then they're only going to be engaged once every four years and that has been problematic over the years of getting people addresses lost getting them unengaged and then trying to to get them back up for an election cycle under this particular one, it uh, uh, it keeps the counties together that tend to flow together. It puts Rogers with Tulsa and Washington, which is a natural flow. It puts uh, Adair and, and uh, Delaware together, which is a natural flow. It puts uh, Sequoia and Muskogee together, which is a natural flow. And we're at this point, then we're not asking folks to 
curve their, their district in half and choose north and south, uh, they get to run, run where they've always run. Uh, it kind of makes sense to have uh, five districts uh, since that's the smallest divisible number of 15. And, uh, uh, and I would ask at this time that we just pass this map and go on not discard it yet, but not try to pass it yet either. And let's look at the other map before we do anything with this one. <coughs> I guess okay. I, I'd miss okay. it. Are you saying keep it in the hopper? Or keep it, yeah, just keep it in the hopper and, and, uh, and, yeah, just keep it in the hopper. Okay. Is that a motion or That's a motion. What's next? Do we have a second? Any further discussion on Map number four, staying as a suggested map, Mr. Thornton. Well, I'd like to discuss it here, but we've got a six-year term, and I, I don't know if I'm going to run again tomorrow. If whoever takes over my term, I'd hate to see them try to run over here in Muskogee County and up to Wagner and down to the South Canadian River. That area is huge, and uh, that's going to take uh, probably... A lot of campaign, uh, campaign in both of these counties or three of these counties, and uh, I can't understand because I don't see no regular flow that they did with ice time that flows over into that area that much. But that's the way I feel about it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Oskin. Yeah, and, I, and to his point, uh, we're not concerned about campaign budgets, but we are concerned about the massive areas that we have to represent people around and drive around in the district, but the question I was going to pose to Todd is, is there any inherent problem in this idea that we have five districts with that many counselors? Does that potentially run afoul of anything that a court might review? Well, before we even get to that, though, I think the comments of, uh, of uh, yourself and Mr. Thornton are not germane to the motion that is on hand. The motion was to pass this map, well, to keep it in the hopper, but your comments and questions is to the merits of the map itself. So I would ask um, Madam Chairman to go ahead and take a, a vote on, on, on Mr. Baker's motion, and then we can come back to this map as well as any other and discuss the merits of it. Okay. All in favor of retaining this map as one to consider later, all the, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. No. Uh, roll call. Yes, I want to keep it. No, I don't. Harley Bessard? No. Julia Coates? Yes. Yeah. Bradley Cobb? No. Joe Crittenden? No. Jody Fishinghop? No. Meredith Fraley? No. Uh, yes. Janelle Fulbright? No. Don Garvin? No. Chuck Coskin Jr.? Yes. Tyna Gloria Jordan? Yes. Curtis Snell? No. Chris Dove? Yes. David Thornton? No. Kara Callan Watts? She's Buell Anglin? No. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? No. Kara Callan Watts? No. Yes, 11 no, so we will not retain this map. That's map number four. Madam Speaker, what was the yeah. order? The earlier motion was to table particular maps. This motion, which may not have been necessary, was to keep this map. So does that, does that was that effectively a motion to table that map? Is that what we were? To me, it's a... a I'll leave it up to the committee, but to me it was a motion to discard it. But is that what John? Well, is that your intent? The, oh, no, the, the, the motion was to keep it for one for consideration. And with the vote of uh, the nays being in, in, in favor of it, the committee has taken a step not to keep that map for consideration. So it would be, in effect, discarded. That's the way. The, the, the moat. Uh, yeah. Okay, now map number five. 
Map number five and the remaining maps are different variations of a 15 district um, map. Now, um, uh, David and Doug, uh, they've uh, crunched the numbers as you can see. Um, uh, what you have in front of you right now, map number five, is very similar uh, to what we had, well, well I, I kind of just call it the veto map. Okay. You know, it was, it, was, it, was, it was very close to what we had uh, um, uh, proposed last, last term. Uh, the difference here being that it is uh, uh, with updated numbers. So that is, that, is, that is map number five. Any questions, comments? Mr. Garvin, you had your hand up earlier. I'm sorry. I was wondering if the state was going to on that last one. <coughs> Any questions or comments for map number five? The 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 ideas on map number five, you know, is to maintain the integrity of the county boundaries as much as possible and what divisions that you make, you make on major highways or waterways uh, to, to be more simplistic for the uh, individuals. As you can see, there are a couple areas in there where that was not able to happen. Uh, uh, bleeding part of uh, eastern Mays County into Delaware County and uh, making the Bradley Cobb L, as I would describe it. Um, Madam Speaker, I just want to move to keep this one in the hopper. Okay. Map number five. Please. Map number five to retain. We got a second. Any discussion? Mr. Hoskin. Um, this does not go to the merits of that, I suppose. This so is just to consider it. Uh, I have a question about the map, but I'll hold that until we're done. Okay. Mr. So. Yeah, I have a question just to verify some numbers on uh, what we're saying is that, that uh, with this map, we have a, a variance of 5,000 or approximately 4,500 citizens from, from one district to another, and that's acceptable uh, numbers to us as this, this council. Where is that? Yeah, district 8 and District yeah. 10. No, there's some, yeah, there, there are variances, so major variances in, 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 in the map, and those are attempted to be corrected in the later maps. I would point out one thing. I thought when we started this, we were going to go with the idea that we would not make sitting council members run against each other. This map does do that. In District 9, you have the Speaker and Chris running against each other. And I would just like to point that out. Okay. Mr. Hoskin. I think I yielded prematurely earlier, Madam Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, but in any case, um, this is very minor compared to the bigger issues we have to deal with. But Councillor Fulbright raised an issue last time about maintaining as much as we could the historic district numbers, historic, relatively speaking. Is there a way to shuffle around the numbers? Oh, the numbers are numbers. I mean, that, that, that's, I, I know Mr. Garvin will want District 3. I am. So, but I mean, yeah, you can switch the numbers there. They were, you had to have one through 15, so we put them somewhere. Yeah. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor of retaining map number five to, for later consideration, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. No. no. Uh, roll call. Yes to retain. No to discard. Yeah, really five elimination. <laughs> Janelle Fulbright? No. Don Garvin? No. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? No. Tina Glory Jordan? No. Curtis Snell? No. Chris Soap? No. David Thornton? Yes. Yeah. Kara Callan Watts? No. Buell Anglin? No. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? No. Harley Buzzer? Yes. Julia Coates? No. Bradley Cobb? No. Joe Crittenden? No. 
Jody fishing hop? No. Mary ah. Frank. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're like, I think it's Chris. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what's the count? Um, two, yay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And 15, no. Two, yes, 15, no. So, discard number five. Okay. Okay, number six. Oh, I'm Mr. Garvin. I'll make a motion to discard number six for the reason there's too many small districts. Second. Too many what? Too many small, small districts. districts. Moved and second. Now discussion. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between six and six? Mr. Garvin, uh, Mr. Baker didn't understand your reasoning on that. You want to repeat? Don't tell him what to say, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, I will tell you the the difference between map number six and map number seven, and, and what and, and the, the glaring discrepancies basically is on uh, uh, district eight. And you see, there's a 47 percent variance there. Uh, the map number seven, as you will see, bleeds off part of northern Cherokee County into southern Delaware County, basically the Oaks Kenwood area. Uh, so that evens that out, uh, so to speak. Um, the biggest variance on um, um, on map six is, as I said, 47 percent. The biggest variance on map number seven is district four. Uh, which is 19%, and that is Western Sequoia County. No, it's District 6. Oh, District 6, 21%. I'm sorry. Yes, it's, 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 the largest one is 26%. 21% on, on Map 7. Okay. Mr. Baker, you have anything else? Comments, questions? The motion is to discard map seven or map, map six. Okay. Six. Motion to discard map number six. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. No. no. Uh, roll, roll call. <laughs> yes, it's to discard. Bill John Maker. Um, yes, it's to discard. Yes. No. Jack Baker? Yes. Marley Buzzard? Yes. Julia Coates? Yes. Yeah. Bradley Cone? Yes. Joe Crittenden? Uh, no. Jody Fishing Hop? No. Mary Fraley? No. Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? Yes. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? No. Tina Gloria Jordan? No. Curtis Snell? Yes. Chris Soap? Yes. David Thornton? No. Harry Callan Watts? No. Bill Anglin? No. We have nine yay and eight nay. Nine yes, eight no. So map number six. Leads us down to map number seven. Okay, folks, uh, this is our last map. <laughs> so we, we, we either, we, we either uh, take an act on this one or scrap the whole thing uh, and, and start from scratch. All right, what you have before you is map seven, which is a 15-district uh, map. Um, as I stated earlier, uh, there is an attempt to... Uh, push up District 8's number uh, by having uh, uh, part of Cherokee County bled off up into Delaware County. Um, uh, the uh, um, areas follow county lines or major uh, geographical boundaries as much as possible, i.e. rivers, major highways, um, where it, the, the attempt is to have voters know what district readily identifiable you know you know if you live north or south of highway 51 you know you uh, you know if you live uh, uh, east or west of grand river uh, 
but uh, be that as it may, there are some discrepancies in here. We did not hit our medium uh, on a couple of districts, uh, most notably District 6, which is Southern Adair County, District 4, uh, uh, Western Sequoia County. Um, but that all being said, it's, uh, um, it's as close as we can get it. Yes. Need a motion. I move that we approve this map subject to David using the 911 that's available in Cherokee County gets these numbers just a little bit closer. <coughs> because we have 911 in Cherokee County. I know that we can, using 911 we can get these numbers a little bit closer in Cherokee County as to the division only in that county. With that, I with that proviso, I move that we approve this map. The motion is to approve the map uh, with subject to using 911 in Cherokee County. Is that correct? Yes. Do I have a second? Second. Moved and second. Now discussion. Mr. Thornton. Yes, I'd like to make an amendment to that. Okay. Have uh, Sequoia County West D4. Will that map take in the Bragg's area? The area there. Is, that, is that right? This little part right here? It'll be this little part right here. Can you show us that up there? So the right. We need our laser pointer. Take in this part right here. Over here. Yeah, that's right. It'd be just like map one. Mm -hmm. I think it's one. Where is that map one? No, it'd be map one. Map two. It is two. Map two. Yeah, it's map one. For the blue, that's in the blue. Map two, is that way too? Okay. Okay, uh, you... In that five. You accept that friendly amendment? Um, can I have just a second? Mm -hmm. Is your hearing is that okay? I do not want to lose those people. I'm going to five times. But I know David will take good care of them, so I guess I'll accept that. Todd? Oh, well. I would accept then that friendly amendment. Okay, the motion is to approve MAP 7 subject to using 911 in Cherokee County and adding Braggs to District 4, Sequoia County. Rick, uh, Mr. Critton. I, I have a small interjection I'd like to talk <laughs> uh, about just for a moment. Interject. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Tom. On, on this uh, map 7, it's showing, and we talked about this while ago, uh, I think kind of brought up to incumbent the council mm -hmm. people, you know, trying to keep them separated some way in this division. In this particular map, it shows myself and Jody Fishenhoff as being separated, or at least for our residence is, by 51 Highway. And that's not actually a fact, because we both live on the north side of that particular highway. And what we could tweak it a little bit and fix it where it would be separated. We'd have to use a different road. Uh, I would highly recommend against that, to be honest with you. Because although we have talked about this and we've talked about it openly, that's really not a consideration of, of, of city and council people. Okay? Uh, it, you know, uh, you, you look for, you know, your jurisdictional boundaries, trying to keep the counties in in, in much as good shape as possible. Um, you know, we bump this up to some county road in Adair County. You're, you know, you, you try to keep it as tight as possible. Now, there's three years between now and the next election. Um, and there will be ample opportunity for people to move into your district and people to move out of your district. Uh, but uh, I think for, and you know, when we start making these little adjustments, we're, we're, we, th this whole map could unravel real quick. Mr. Crittenden, you still have the floor. Oh, that's okay. I, I was just making a point. It matters not that much to me one way or the other. Because, as David said, I may not want to get any of them. So, and who knows what might happen in the next five or six years. 
Mr. Hoskin? I withdraw. You withdraw, Ms. Gordon? Was that a request for a friendly amendment? Uh, initially was, yes, but uh, for some reason it... Uh, I would accept it. I'm not sure that all these districts that we're looking at here are separated by a state highway. They may be. I, I haven't helped draw this. I think it would be a slight deviation. I don't Mr. Hoskin? Well, I hear what Todd's saying about, you know, my fear someday that that whoever challenges this raises the issue that it was politically motivated and even though I sympathize with that. The, on the other hand, if the districts still maintain some integrity of being a, a natural geographic area, uh, if the tweaking you know, doesn't disturb that too much. I mean, this 51 highway is, is, is a significant boundary. Are there other significant boundaries? Uh, again, I, I don't I mean, I fear the, the, the plaintiff that says we were uh, motivated by uh, incumbency protection, but, uh, but then again, you know, we have to draw this map some way, and if we can demonstrate that the tweaking still maintained two districts that had some, you know, integrity in terms of their history and natural boundaries, then that sort of weighs in favor of Councilor. Motion. I don't know enough about the district to answer that question, but I would pose it to Council Crittenden or Council Fish and Honors. Ms. Hoskin, will you finish? <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Fulbright? Well, I'm not that familiar with Adair County, but not just for political reasons, but just for the... I can't see any difference on this, but Mr. Crittenden's initial request and Mr. Thornton wanting to take in the Braggs. I mean, there's not any definite line right there either. So, I just thought... The, the, ma the major uh, motivation for expanding Western Sequoia County District is to try to even out the numbers. Okay? So, so that, you know, you have a more balanced... Uh, you, you, don't, you don't do away with the deviation. Now, you know, yeah, D6 is a light number uh, or is a light district. Uh, but the, the fact is if you go any further north really on Highway 51, well, then you're going to get all of Stillwell into that district unless you just really carve out Stillwell. And if you give southern Adair County all of Stillwell, uh, you're, you, then, then D7 is going to be extremely light. Uh, Highway 51 kind of splits Stillwell right down the middle. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's like I said, you know, pe people are going to be moving in and out of districts, you know, in the next three years. You know, we, we don't know where, you know, it's going to be. But, you know, incumbency considerations should, should be, and I've always said this, for the last three years, it should be the very last thing on your list. Dr. Cobb? I have a question for David. And I, I, I'm being facetious, but I'm actually kind of being... Why is it always Mays County? It's like, it's like you do, it's, I'm not saying you, it's like we, we do this whole math, and it's like we get to the center, and it's like, well, let's just do this. <clears throat> and I'm not saying that's, that's what happened, but it's always Mays County. Well, why, what is the problem with... Well, the, what, what's, what's, why is the center of this map always like the problem? Yeah. The problem with it is, is uh, in our in the northern areas and in the southern areas, we have large zip codes. Zip codes play a major factor in our boundaries that we're using. Um, on this map number seven, uh, everything is split by a zip code except Cherokee County, Adair, and Sequoia County. So all of the other uh, Washington's not. That's well, the Washington is county, county line. In uh, Rogers County, Mays County, Delaware County. Um, all of those splits are based off of zip code boundaries. Um, in Mays County, Rogers County, Tulsa County, and actually in uh, Washington County, we have quite a few smaller zip codes. When you get down to uh, well, Sequoia County, once you took the uh, PO boxes out, uh, or the, the little areas for designating a PO uh, post office, mm -hmm. Sequoia County really only had like four zip codes for the entire county. So 
So it makes it hard when you've got those large zip codes like that to try to split them up. Well, I just, <coughs> and, and, and I'm a firm believer in looking 10 years down the road when we're not here, and I don't mean physically, I just mean, you know, whatever, but uh, I, I'm looking at, at communities and how those communities flow for, you know, plagiarism there, but I, I just, whoever, it, it, on this map seven, I, I just cannot, 10, 15 years down the road, don't envision the southern part of District 9 on this map 7 and the northern part of District 9. I mean, that, that's just an odd, it just looks like, well, this is what's left over. Let's just make a district out of it. That's I mean, pretty I, much I, what it was. I mean, I, and I just, <laughs> and, and I just, I, I, you know, I, that's a tough. It's just Mates County, whatever. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean I, I'm not, gonna, I'm just not really in support of this, and that's why. Right. I mean, that's that's why, and and I, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That's really my biggest hang-up on this whole map is that. I, I mean, I, I've, I've listened to the the count, and I know this isn't about the sitting councilors. I I do, understand, <coughs> but I I do believe the councilors know their districts and their people better than 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 anyone. And I haven't heard anything from some of the other counselors about well you're cutting communities up you're, you're cutting traditional um, ties to, to certain areas up and but except the only thing I hear is here in Mays County and I, I, that's my problem is is I just think we're doing a disservice to whoever is in there's got to be a way I mean, I'm, otherwise I'm to be honest with you I'm pretty fine with everything it's just it's always it seems to be Mays County and I, I don't I don't want to put words in the, the mouths of the counselors from Mays County, but I just can't see how this is going to flow. So I, that's, that's, oh, yeah. that's where my concern is. I understand. Um, District 2 has, if I remember off the top of my head right, District 2 has like two zip codes. Yeah. District 9 and this uh, map number 7 has 11, I think, or 12 different zip codes that it encompasses. I just I want to reiterate I think we're I really believe we're really close on a lot of stuff it just keeps boiling down to the center of this map for me that's how I feel about it thank you fishing hawk Chris so you got a question about on district 10 the uh, northern I guess the northeast boundary coming off of Lake Hudson what is that? Is that a zip code boundary? A river or uh, a creek or what is that? Zip code boundary. I'm not sure which zip code that is. We talked about that last time. That's, you know, we had made some suggestions. I didn't see that in That was. Um, <coughs> number one and number two took those suggestions, added them over to your area. I don't think that whole zip code encompassed the uh, line of that first. Suggestion. No, it wasn't just one. There, were, I think there were three or four different right. zip codes there. Okay. So that's that's the zip code boundary. If I remember right, yes. Okay. And then uh, on District Eight, <coughs> this is all zip code boundaries. County boundaries and zip code boundaries. Okay. What is that? Anything else, Mr. Silk? Uh, Mr. Corey Jordan? Yes, I, I just wanted to make sure, Kara, you're awful heavy. Are you okay with that? Yep. Because it looks like you're the, on this map, you've got, you've got 20%. Oh, it's still better than what we got right now, I'll say. And I don't think I got a second on that last room. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I just was making sure what <laughs> Mr. Hoskins, oh, no. will you finish? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Hoskins? To, I wanted to speak to Councilor Cobb's issue with Mays County. I, I see what you're saying. It, it, with respect to Mays County, and I'm no expert on Mays County, but except for what Councilor Soap identified as a zip code battery, it, it appears to be split by water. 
which is a natural boundary. And I just wonder, you know, it, it appears to run along the river and in the lake. And I just wonder, was that a factor in trying to determine community of interest? And I don't know, Todd, if you had a hand in the Mays County portion of Map 7, but while you're out of the room, Councilor Cobb raised some concerns about the center of the map seems to be what's divvied up, and particularly Mays County. But I see kind of a natural breaking point in Mays County. Was that a factor? The major factor in that is that that is a geographical boundary that would be best suited for public uh, uh, public consideration, basically. You know, that you know where, you know, you, and, and for, for candidates. I know I campaign up to the river. I know if I live on the east side of the river, I, um, my counselor is Mr. X, and I know if, it's, uh, if I live on the other side of the river, it's Mrs. Y. So that makes it seem less hard, and I'm concerned about arbitrary parsing up of the land, but that makes at least Mays County, to me, as somebody that doesn't live in Mays County, seem less arbitrary. And so that, I think, would address some of your concerns. I yield to Mrs. I, my concern, and, and that's a great point, my concern is this little, small, purple, southern bit. Yeah, yeah that, that's my whole concern, is, is it looks like it just kind of, well, we don't know where to put this, so we'll just put it here. What? How many people live in that district, in, in, in that little purple piece? Um, Any idea? Brad, part of that is Yonkers. Uh, it's on one side of the lake, and it's hard to... It actually should be with Mays County, the Yonkers area, because it borders Mays County, and those people do everything in Mays County rather than go over to Wagoner, because they have to cross the lake to get over there. But I think that's part of the reasoning. Okay. All the way, all the way down from there, I don't know. And it's back to Mr. Hoskin, I believe. Uh, Mr. So? Yeah, I was just, uh, if I could suggest that if we're going to use natural boundaries, then can we just use Grand River and have the people on the east side as a District 10 and the people on the west side as District 9 all the way up to the... Uh, okay, so did. Yes. Because that cuts out Spavanaugh? Mm -hmm. No, I don't, that I don't think that, that Spavanaugh is on that side of it. Yeah, I think it is. They're still on the east side. They're on the west side of the river. Are they on the west side? Mm-hmm. So Anything further, Mr. Schultz? Hello? Anything further? No, I was making that as a friend. Uh, so that's a, you want that as a friendly amendment? Yes, please. To... Okay, that right there? I don't know. Right. Yes, I would accept that as a friendly amendment. I mean, we validated that we were using oh. natural landmarks as a, as a boundary versus people jumps on the zip codes. And that's probably even up those two numbers, too. Does it complicate names or... So the the friendly amendment is to include in District 10 all areas west of Grand River, correct? Correct. Mr. Buzzard? Does that include Wagner County? No, just to the... Well, and, and that's why the clarification. Well, they said everything west of the the Grand, the Grand River. River. Well, if you saw the Grand River, yeah. it <laughs> all the way to uh, for those oh, well, those, those we're portions we're in Mays County. Wagner, in Mays County. County. Okay. 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 That was a clarification. Okay. Just a point, though. So we're not talking about Wagner County. <laughs> okay. You accepted that amendment. And we're not talking sure. about anything about Wagner County. No, it's, it's still the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that'll make us look. It evens up the numbers a little bit, too. Okay. Uh, Mr. Buzzard. Uh, a couple of questions. Because David on District 9, or District 8, is that divided by zip code? Yes, sir. Um, you know, before, and we're talking about, we're just getting so many amendments in here that I'm looking to try to go the Delaware County would actually be divided by Highway 20 east and west, and now we've changed up the zip code. So I don't know what that does. Do you, do you know, David, off the top of your head? Uh, 
off the top of your head? I'm not sure. I don't know what it. Curtis thinks about it, but you know, if we're going to divide the district boundaries or highways or section lines, I would want mine by Highway 20. And it doesn't bother me that much unless it bothers you, Curtis. No, Highway 20, I thought it was. Well, well this is that not. Is this is by no, this no. is by so Oh, I thought it was. Highway 7. You hear that uh, friendly amendment? I guess it's a friendly amendment, right, Harley? Yeah. And uh, uh, originally, when we divided up Delaware, Delaware County, that's what we did. Yeah. Highway, Highway 20. Um, and uh, I'll be honest with you, I thought I thought this was Highway 20. No. But 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 you know that that, that, that it's not. Uh, what it will do to the numbers, I don't know. But I mean, that is a good. I mean, that's the geographical boundary by which yeah. we had originally thought of uh, dividing Highway 20. That's going to give it that veto map has Highway 20 yeah. as the boundary, yeah. identical to that. If it, you were to move that line, it probably helps. It will. It will. Yeah. It's going well, to. It's going yeah. to hurt. It takes, it's going to hurt District 11. 11. Depends on what numbers that map was generated off. It's going to hurt District 11. District 11 will go down to 5,801 people. You'll be 21, or you'll be. 20% less of the optimal number. They ha we have 911 addresses up there. Could be straightened up by that? No. Because the uh, 911 uh, is only good up in the Grove area, and Highway 20 is going to split the J. And what we've got, we don't have good 911 for the J area. All of Denver County has 911 address. We can go back and look at it, but I'm pretty sure that we don't have anything except for the Grove area. Yeah, we have, we have a 911 address in all west of J and all of Denver County. Well, just be just because the county has a 911 yeah. system doesn't necessarily mean that it's been updated in the uh, in the roads data set that we use. As far as far as the national data set goes, the People use the geocode and find a particular point. Just means Delaware County hasn't submitted their data. Well, that right. right. Are you, Mr. Buzzard, is there any action you want to take? Well, uh, I can get that changed. Well, I said I can get it changed, but I'll certainly call 911 and ask them to submit data. Sure. That would help. Yes, I'd like to make a friendly amendment if that can be done. I said, okay, what's the amendment? Is that to divide up Delaware County based on 911? And using Highway 20. Restate your um, amendment. Uh, I want to divide uh, Delaware County using Highway 20 as the boundaries for the uh, north and south. Are you okay with that, Curtis? Right here. He's going to go back to this one for you. Let's do this okay, see where that light is. He's wanting to raise, raise your line uh, and we can take more all the way up to Highway 20. Got all these right. That's that one right there. Right. Mm -hmm. And he actually has that one. Okay. Right. Uh, this is the seventh one we're working on. But I went back. But I went back to see what we were divided by Highway 20. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a friendly amendment on the floor um, to divide Delaware County using Highway 20 I, as a boundary for North and South. Is that correct? I, I accepted that friendly amendment. And Just a moment. Is that correct, Mr. Buzzard? Yes. And I want to put one more caveat in that. If it's going to throw our numbers so far off, then I want to withdraw that motion, but I want the numbers checked out first. The numbers are on page on map five, and it drops you down to if you take that district just the way you're you're proposing, it takes you down to 5801. It takes uh, number 11. District. Yeah, this district 15 uh, is divided at but 20, and then gives you Ottawa, and it has a number of 5801. District 11 will go from 7481 to 5801. If you don't, we use 911. We can't use 911. It's not going to work. We don't have it for the 9. Where the highway is, Highway 20, 
We don't have 911 for where okay. Highway 20 is. Uh, I think we're just confusing everyone. Bill John, would you restate those numbers? Okay. The, I mean, according to the, the maps that are all figured the same, if you drop up to Highway 20, mm -hmm. that's going to change uh, District uh, 11 to 5801 total population, which is going to bump Curtis up to... Uh, which is District 8. Eight. Uh, he's short 500, but it's going to buck. Uh, 2,000. It'll be 11 over. It'll be 1,100 over, and part of it'll be 1,600. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just a shift between those two districts. Yeah. Well, one's over, one's under now, the other one will be over, and the other one will be over. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about the car? Oh, I. Very good. I like this number six map. <laughs> <laughs> I got about 300. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? <laughs> Can I recap what I think is happening with my motion? Uh, the secretary will. Okay, let's, let's have Kelly do it then. All right, the original motion was to approve map seven mm -hmm. subject to using 911 in Cherokee County. Mm -hmm. And there is a friendly amendment in District 4 to take the Braggs area. Mm -hmm. And there's another friendly in Mays County to use the Grand River Lines west would go into District 10. The third friendly was to divide Delaware County, which is D8 and D11 by Highway 20 boundaries for north and south, right? Yes. Everyone clear? Any further discussion? Ms. Fishing Hawk? I don't have to move until closer, two or three years down the road. Because <laughs> we're the two that's running, is Okay. Any further discussion? Dr. Cobb? I just want to know how I got district number 13 out of this deal. <laughs> <laughs> Friday 13. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, these approving map number seven with these friendly amendments signify the saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carried. You have a map. <laughs> map number seven. <laughs> Dr. Cobb? Madam Chairman, it is, is it the uh, will of the committee or subcommittee to come back one more time as a subcommittee or do you want this map with the revisions passed directly on the rules? Anybody want to make a motion to pass this to rules? I'll move. Second. Move the second. Any discussion? It will be on the next rules agenda. Which will post today. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. So, David, I need the new map by tomorrow. Madam Chair. Oh, yes. And I would just ask that those maps be emailed out separately and not just included in the book so that we can make sure and, and see them ASAP because we didn't see them this the way just seeing including in those words. But we'll just, I, I won't oh, for David's email. second that, but won't we just have one map? Well, I mean, yes, one yeah, map. One map. I'm still this map. So just the one map. Go out on email instead of in the book. So we'll get it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, we're down to uh, item number two, which is number three. <clears throat> discussion and possible action covering bad addresses of tribal citizens and tribal elections. I asked Shelley to put this on the agenda because I believe it's better to get it done sooner than later. Uh, we have so many bad addresses and I asked uh, Miss Beaver to, to uh, come here today to tell us what she needs in order to effect that plan. Wanda, do you want to come forward? Wanda, do you have uh, a, a fairly accurate account of how many bad addresses that you have? Uh, yes, as of today, we had 14,780. Oh, mercy. How <laughs> 50,000. Uh, 
Ms. Cam Watts, did you have a question? Out of, out of, I asked her how many, and she, out of how many, and she said out of a total of 50,000, so what's that? 25%? 30%? Mm -hmm. Bad addresses? Bad addresses. And a lot of those are like bad from like 10 years. They've just been people never, they registered at that time and once the red card was returned, you know, it's a bad address and they've never bothered to update it. They have not been active voters. Ms. Fishing Hawk, did you? I was going to ask her how she would remove people like on my list that are dead that I've done. How do y'all remove them? We usually just go by the registration. A lot of times if people mail in a notification to us, we remove them that way. And then we also month by month go with what registration has we updated. Martha, did you have a comment? Well, I have a comment on the bad addresses. And I've, I've served now in about five elections. But since 95, two election laws said people become ineligible. John Doe had a bad address. He became ineligible. Next election, same John Doe became ineligible. Bad address. We counted him twice. Then the third election, there was no ineligibles. All those people were reinstated and put back on the registration. Okay. Address still bad. Count him another time. Three. So, we've counted five times. Five times John Doe's name could be on that 13,000 five times. See, because we're doing this every election because your commission changes, they do it different, your laws change. So it's been counted since 95 election. Jody, did you have any further questions? Do you all ever do anything like during election time when I ran? I had uh, address service requested. I mean, it cost me. Mm -hmm. But do you all ever do that? And a lot of times, too, uh, on that, we would mail another form to that address, the new address that was, and that was returned. Are you allowed to access all of the databases available at Cherokee Nation? And what I mean by that. Uh, to keep your addresses up to date, are you allowed to get the most current address for membership, the most current address from a service uh, offering department? No. And why is it that we don't do that? I mean, are you just not allowed to do it presently? Uh, well, registration, at one point, we did have access to the address, but when they upgraded their system, since then, and I was told it was some kind of policy that they had, you know, that all we were able to get is to verify whether they are a current member and then the relinquished list and their deceased list. That's all we have access to. I, I would, and I think I probably need to make this in the form of a motion, that the election commission should be able to access all data sources available at Cherokee Nation to keep their their addresses up to date. And we all know that the most current would either be membership or where it is a department that someone receives a service. I think it has something to do with confidentiality. Uh, Todd? Madam Chairman, and I think I'll yield yeah. to uh, yeah. Ms. Coates here because we were just talking about this. We were just talking about this. We've just done an at-large mailing that was just disastrous in terms of what came back in terms of bad addresses. And so I met earlier today with Tanya Williams with Leela Umerteski, and we would like to work, begin working on this, and we would love to have uh, people from the election uh, services uh, join us in this effort to try to develop some sort of uh, uh, legislation to, to develop a central database through registration, first of all, for, for sharing of change of addresses that come through any department of this nation, uh, that, that that is done through registration. So we're sort of presently uh, beginning to work on this. That would help. Would I still have the floor? Um, yeah. well, then I would modify my motion to uh, have Todd prepare the necessary legislation so that those databases can be utilized to update their I've bad already addresses. already asked him to do that, as a matter of fact, yes. So, Todd, you've been requested to do that? Yes, ma'am, and I will uh, 
get on it uh, immediately. And, and with that, Julie, would you join me in that motion? And we'll get a second, and we'll be the authors of it. <laughs> I think Mr. Baker and I were authoring well, something, we're, and we'd be happy to have you join okay. us on that. Okay, well, I want to join them, and I would hope all of you all would want to join in support of that so that we at least get a good address list for the next next time around. A lot of money is being wasted sending stuff out to people that it's not getting there. Is there um, is, oh, sorry. The motion was to do what? Officially ask for legislation to achieve her being able, the election commission being able to tap into all available resources to get the most current addresses possible for our list of voters. So the motion is to develop legislation to develop the most current addresses. Julia, do you agree with that? I, we're already doing it, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. so you're seconding the motion? Or somebody? Well, <laughs> I think we're approaching it differently than what's been uh, than the approach that has been suggested by Councilor Gordon. Mr. So Attorney, you want to intercede? But, hey, we're, it's six of one, half dozen of the other. I mean, the idea is to, to create a piece of legislation to be a, an address clearinghouse for all aspects of the Cherokee Nation so we don't have these in, you know, Chinese walls, so to speak, um, you know, between two, you know, I I various departments. We're going to develop that legislation. I'll be happy to work with Ms. Uh, Tyna Jordan on it and uh, as well as any uh, counselor. But the idea is a one central point, clearinghouse, for, for addresses to be shared. Do we have a projected date to get that done? Uh, no, since I just... Madam Speaker, I can address that. We, uh, what I would suggest is, is stick to one half a dozen of the other, but that we approach this from the direction that this is done for all of the Cherokee Nation rather than just election services, so that we not specifically focus on doing this for election services, but this is a central database that comes through registration, and so that we focus on registration, that that's the department that we focus on, and to, to take it from that direction. In terms of a timeline, we would hope to have something for the Rules Committee in July, uh, and hopefully something that isn't too complex that most people will be able to support that we could pass uh, in full council in August. So that would be sort of a preliminary timeline we'd be looking at. How would, how would that help you, Wanda? Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> the earlier, the better. So. So we, you want to just wait then to tell us what you really need to get this done sure. until they get this database? Yes, I think that would probably solve a lot of our... Okay, and then issues. it would be administered through administration, is that... Through administration? administration. Mm -hmm. Mr. Buzzard, yeah, sorry. I want, to, I want to clarify what uh, Council Coates just said. <coughs> Are you talking about, and I think this needs to happen, we have 500 applications that goes out for water and sanitation with this 14 year system about it. The roads program goes out and they get legal prescriptions of all tribal people. The health clinics, they also have updated addresses and stuff like that. Are we saying that should go into this database? Is that what we're proposing to? What we're because proposing. it needs to be done. Right. What we're proposing is that any department of the Cherokee Nation, whenever they take an address for services of any kind, yes. that, that, that the address be verified with registration, and if it is different than what registration has, that an automatic update of the new address goes to registration from whatever department. Now, registration currently requires a valid photo ID, and any department could be empowered to accept that valid photo ID on behalf of registration as part of the updating process. So that, and also that in burial assistance, that any uh, death certificates also would automatically be recorded with uh, registration as well. So change of addresses and deceased. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh -huh. Gloria Jordan. <coughs> and am I to understand that once this centralized base is established in registration, that the election commission will be able to automatically draw from that? They won't be prohibited in any way from 
the information going back and forth between the two areas. The idea is that we, Chinese walls, somebody said, right, that we've got a lot of, uh, we've got departments that can't access registration to the extent that they would like to. We have other departments that are reluctant to, to share information with registration. And so to remove all barriers in all directions so that information gets shared uh, across departments about where people are at, what is their present location. I can see where it might, and in child welfare, and like that, it could be a problem. Well, um, that was a discussion that came up. Leela seems to think that they are already addressing that, actually, in, in, in de facto, so she anticipates not that much of a problem, perhaps. Mr. Hoskin? Will, will this be... Uh, retroactive in any way? In other words, the department already has a whole bunch of addresses after we enact this law. Would they send that over or is it just going forward they would just start sending it over? Um, that's a good thought. We, we should discuss that. It could be retroactive that we check what, we've, what every department has with what registration has. Mr. Garvin? Uh, I think we have a meeting at 4 o'clock. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> so I make a motion we adjourn. Okay, we have a motion on the floor first to. Okay, I, I think we're. I, I believe we're all saying the same mm -hmm. thing. So you want to withdraw your motion? Yes. Would you like to just work on it with us and, I would. and just? We don't need a motion, do we, to just go ahead and no, join us with? No. As long as we have yeah. a defined timetable, so that yeah. we this doesn't get lost in the shuffle, and right. we get the information to them. Right. Now, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep it on the agenda if okay. you want us to. No, uh, that's what I'm going to do. We have a motion to adjourn, but we have one item for discussion here. But doesn't look like we need to, do we? No. no. Permanent table. Yeah. Okay. Second. So All in favor? Uh, tabling. 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 <laughs> Of tabling this item, which was number one, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Now, motion to adjourn. Did I have a second? <laughs> second. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Phew. All right. <laughs>